Hey guys, just wanted to do maybe three problems with you guys using this approach uh, that we talked earlier about um, when it came to um, so when it comes to solving dynamic problems. Okay, so here we got our problems. Let's um, start off with our knowns. Um, This a box has two diagonal forces of 100 newtons acting down on it. Uh, one is 15 degrees, the other one is 30 degrees to the normal. The mass of the box is one kilo. Assume no friction and answer the following What is the net force acting on the box and what is its acceleration? There's some things that we have. We've got force one, which is 100 newtons. It's being acted at 15 degrees. Force two is coming in at 100 newtons, and it's at 30 degrees. We know the value of Fg because we know the mass is equal to one kilogram. So we find that one times 9.8, that's 9.8 newtons. We know the mass of the box is one kilogram. Next thing that we need to do is have a look at um, if we have an axis, Yes, we have an axis, we're going to have, so that's our y, and that's our x. We're going to choose this direction is positive, and that direction is positive, this one is negative, and that direction is negative. Okay, um, now let's have a look at Newton's laws. So uh, any, any of the forces, um, do they cancel out? Well, yes, because it's in a flat plane, uh, Fn and Fg, which are the forces on the y-axis, I'm going to add up to zero. So the sum of the forces in the y-axis, um, which is equal to um, Fn minus Fg, they equal to zero. Um, and Newton's third law says that uh, when forces are equal to each other and they're acting upon each other, um, they're synonymous. So we can say that Fn is equal to Fg. Okay. Um, now, do we expect any net force happening in the vertical direction? No, it's going to happen in the horizontal direction. And that's how we're going to solve for our acceleration in second, using the second law. So let's, um, um, let's, um, look at uh, those horizontal forces. Now the other thing that I just quickly missed out there is I've got Fn and Fg. Um, you would expect also to have a, um, a vertical component from this force pushing the, the box down um, and that would also increase um, the value of the normal force. Um, but in this instance, we're going to disregard that and just simplify this problem like that. Okay, just remember, we're looking for the x component. The x component of this vector is going to be acting this way, Rx2, and the x component of this vector is going to be acting in that direction. And it's going to be Rx1. Okay, uh, we're going to choose this one as positive in that direction, this one as negative in that direction. So we can see what the forces are in the x direction. We're going to say um, uh, Rx2 minus Rx1 um, is going to have some kind of net force. We hope. It might add up to zero or not. Um, and we can substitute in the equation again. So we know that it's 100 um, cosine 15 degrees minus 100 cosine 30 degrees. That, 
and we find out um, that the sum of these forces, um, if net, is equal to approximately 10 newtons. So we've done the first part. We know the forces in the vertical direction and in equilibrium, and only the ones in the horizontal we're concerned with. Um, yes, these vertical ones do add to the weight force, but again, that would be in equilibrium with that. And because we're not calculating any friction, we don't have to be any concerned about that value there. Okay, with that, we can now um, we can now solve for the acceleration of the object. So we know the second law says F net is equal to mass times acceleration net. So we want to find that acceleration is equal to F divided by M. 10 divided by one kilogram. Um, and we figure out that acceleration is 10 meters per second squared in the positive direction. Very good. Let's try the next problem. Okay, let's have a look at this situation. I've modified this problem a little bit from the first time you recognized it on Friday. Okay, so it says a box is being dragged by a force of 10 newtons, which is this one here. Uh, and the coefficient, sorry, the box has a mass of one kilogram. Uh, it, uh, it's got a coefficient of friction of 0.8.6. It's asking you to consider what is the acceleration value that this person must accelerate in this direction in order for this force to constantly be maintained and um, deal with the force of friction. So let's write our knowns. Guys, if you need to speed up uh, at any point, please do so. Uh, okay, so we've got our knowns. We don't know the frictional force. We do have the coefficient of friction. We know its mass is one kilogram. The force applied is 10 newtons, and the angle of the applied force is uh, 25 degrees. Okay, um, let's go through um, conventions. Yes, we've got a Y and we've got an X axis. Set positive side, positive side as well. Now let's go through Newton's laws. Do we have any forces which are going to cancel out? Yes, usually our um, polar uh, forces here, uh, the norm force and, and the weight force will cancel out. Um, here we also have to consider uh, the Y component of um, our Y of um, this particular force because it's also working in this direction. So let's uh, write that up. So the sum of forces in the y direction is going to be equal to Fn plus, um, we can write it as Ry, and we'll define it in terms of its sign components in a second, um, minus Fg, they're going to cancel out and they're going to be equal to zero. So now we can define normal force, which will help us to solve for friction. Okay, and um, let's do that. Um, Fn plus um, 10 sine 25 minus weight uh, force, which is equal to mass times gravity. Which is one minus nine point eight. Okay, now it's important to remember that we're solving for Fn, right? So all this we, we have to simplify. We can add this value with that and then move it to the other side. Is equal to okay, 
get onto the other side. So we got 9.8 minus. So I move this to the other side, that's become positive. Move this to the other side, that's going to become a negative. That one's equal to 4 point, um, 4.2. And then we get our normal force value is equal to. Five point six. Okay, newtons. That's our normal force value. It just happens to be that we were figuring out what's happening in the y-axis, um, and because we had foresight about this frictional force, because we don't have any frictional force value, we just have um, coefficient of friction. We just went ahead and uh, solved for that. That's okay. Okay. So that's what's happening in the y-axis. Let's see what's happening in the x-axis, because okay, ultimately we we know um, Newton's um, Using Newton's second law, we know that the net force has to be either going I mean, this direction. If you look at the size of the vector, it's clearly going to be larger than the frictional force we're expecting to go this way. It's not always going to be scaled, um, but uh, here we can kind of see that obvious situation that's going to happen there. Um, so let's do that. What are the forces on the x direction? We're going to have Rx minus. F, and there's going to be a net force in this situation. We'll see how we do. We define that. It's going to be 10 cosine 25. Uh, and that's going to be subtracted from the frictional force, Fm. And we can define Fm in a second. Well, we'll, we can actually do it now. So, all right, so let's have this solve for. Um, Frictional force. Okay, frictional force is going to be equal to mu n. It's going to be equal to 0 0.816 uh, multiplied by 6. Okay, this is 4.6 Newton of friction force is occurring in the negative direction. We'll come back to this side. Um, we've put that value in there. 9.1 uh, minus 4.6 is going to give me the net force. It's going to give me a value of 4.5 newtons. Now I can come along and solve for um, I can solve for acceleration. That's a net force. So that's 4.5 is equal to one kilogram divided by um, multiplied by a. We figure out that the acceleration is 4.5 um, meters per second squared. Okay, um, <clears throat> and we've kind of jumped the gun again in there. Um, but you can see we've, we've we have used Newton's third law, which is um, these forces are going to be equal to each other, therefore they're synonymous, you can use them. So uh, we didn't have the normal force and we just instead um, equated the normal force to equal to um, the weight force and the vertical sine y component of um, the vector that's pulling that's dragging the object, and we've equated them, we've used, we've used Newton's third law, we've resolved that vector, um, and therefore we, we were able to calculate that net force being um, 4.5 Newtons that was acting in the horizontal axis, and we were able to calculate the acceleration that the person had to um, be accelerating at in order for that 
system to continue that motion. Okay, one more. Okay, here we've got a bit of a different situation. Uh, it's not a box lying on a flat floor. What we actually have instead is um, what's supposed to be an advertisement sign and it's being hung by two ropes. So you've got this rope here, uh, rope one, which is completely um, parallel to the floor. And you've got this rope, which is diagonal to the floor, um, to the normal by, by an angle of six degrees. Um, now the, the problem in this, this situation is, is not that they want you to find the different components. I mean, you will have to use those, but they want you to use your logic um, in order to solve for the weight force acting on the object. So you can see that's the unknown. They want you to calculate the weight force of the object. And with that, I guess you can uh, uh, guess the... Guess the the mass of the of the advertising sign, but we just want the weight. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So we got our axis, we got our conventions, we've got our knowns. Let's have a look at Newton's um, laws. So we have any forces that cancel out. Well, if this is a sign, right? You can just kind of think of it as a sign there, and it's being dangled between two different uh, surfaces like that. Um, and it's got some kind of weight force acting on it, then because it's not swinging in the horizontal direction, it's static like that, the forces in the x-axis are actually going to cancel out. So the sum of the forces in the x-axis have to equal zero. Otherwise, the sign uh, would be moving back and forth. And that's not the case. It's, it's static. Um, and, and that's the case, so we actually have those, those forces. So we got uh, 10 Newtons um, uh, minus um, the X component of this force, Rx, they're going to be equal to zero. Right? And we can um, break that into components in a second. Now let's have a look at Newton's second law. Is there actually going to be some kind of net force um, happening? Well, I, I don't think so. Like if you look at the, the vertical uh, direction, again, those forces should add up to zero as well. Um, so some of the forces in the vertical direction should also add up to zero because the object is, the sign is not moving up and down. It's not jiggling up and down or moving on. Um, moving horizontally, it's just static, right? So <clears throat> that would be the Y component, which would be this one here. Oh, Y is going to be equal to FG, right? Um, RY minus FG is equal to zero. Okay, and then it says Newton's third law, do, do any of the forces equal each other. Yes, all the forces actually equal each other. That in essence is the definition of an object being hung by a couple of strings. All the forces in both the X and the vertical and the, and the Y uh, direction are balanced with each other. Um, that is what's going on. And now we can actually um, resolve some of these vectors and we don't have to calculate any net force we just have to use Newton's um, third law to figure out the problem. So Newton's third law has said that the Y component of the rope, of this rope two, is equal to the weight force. And that's what we're solving here. What is the weight force acting on the sign? So let's write that up. FG is equal to um, uh, sine theta, and that's equal to 20 newtons sine 60. Um, let's give you a FG value. We find out that FG is equal to
17.32 newtons. That's the weight force of that sign. Okay. 